Jesus. Hello everyone and welcome back to Tech with NK. In today's video, I'm going to propose a solution to the exercise Codify from CS50's introduction to programming with Python. I'm going to show you how to solve this exercise. However, I just wish to provide you with a few tips or ideas that you could use while solving the exercise later on by yourself. So that said, let's look at the exercise and see what's expected from us. I'm going to start by skipping through this, but I'll come back to it gradually. And right here, if you look at this, we're expected to create a Python file, we'll call it scorgify.py, and implement a program that expects the user to provide two command line arguments. The first, the name of an existing CSV file to read as input, whose columns are assumed to be in order name and house. And the second, the name of a new CSV file to write as output, whose columns should be in order first, last, and house. And this file, scorgify.py, converts the input into that output, as seen up here, splitting each name into a first name and a last name assuming that each student will have both a first name and a last name and if the user does not provide exactly two command line arguments or if the first cannot be read the program should exit via a sys.exit with an error message and if we look at the demo when the code is run the first time this time around with no arguments the file exited with a message too few command line arguments this time when it was run with just one it still had to exit with the message too few command line arguments and this time around three files were passed 1.csv 2.csv 3.csv and the code exited with the message too many command line arguments in this case though there were two files passed the code exited with the message could not read 1.csv why because this file does not exist and this time the code was run with before.csv which actually exists and the output was contained in after.csv, reason why I would not see it here on the screen. However, when we're going to test this, I'm going to show you what after.csv looks like. And we've been given a few hints here. If I open this, we can see from the hints that there are a few CSV methods that will be useful, especially dictreader and dictwriter. And also, it's possible to tell dictwriter to write its field names to a file using write header with no arguments and this just means that we can use dig writer to write the header for our file that is the header for each column and so coming back to this file before.csv as we see up here you see that the file has two headers name and house that's the headers for two columns and in the second row we have a name and a house a name and a house a name and a house and these names are separated as last name first name and house however the file is not organized in that order because the header generalizes the name and we cannot access each name that's last name or first name independently so what we are expected to do is to create a python file that will be able to read through this file before the csv access each name per row separate this name into two variables last and first and then use that to write a new file with three different headers first last and house for first name last name and house and at the end of it as usual we are expected to test our code as you can see here we need to check for all the individual outputs or rather exit messages too few command line arguments, too many command line arguments, could not read invalid CSV file and at the end run the code with a file that actually exists and check that the output is what we expected. So with this I'm going to open up VS code in my computer and we're going to write the code together. I have already created my file scorgify.py and right now it's empty but not for so long. If you watched my previous video on pizza.py, you realize that the code structure will be the same like what we had in that video because we are expected to check the way the user runs this code, that's to make sure that there are exactly three command line arguments passed by the user, not more, not less. And to do that, we're going to use a number of if statements and then we're going to try to open the file and read it, extract each line of data in that file 
write it into a new variable and then use that data to create a new file and all of these we're going to put in a try except else block so if we take a brief look at our file pizza.py here to understand what i'm trying to say you see that the first thing we need to do is to import the necessary modules in this case we'll just import sys and csv we're not going to import tabulate any longer that was just for pizza and then we're going to check the number of arguments and the type of the arguments that the user is going to pass when running the code using these if statements and after we're going to put our code in the try except else block so permit me to just copy all of these and paste it in this file here and modify it step by step so for the sake of this exercise we still need the model sys and we still need the model csv but what we don't need is the model tablet so i'm going to remove this then we're going to check the number of arguments the user runs the code with however this time around we're not going to check if the number is equal to one but we're going to check if this number is less than three and if that's the case exit with the message too few command line argument but if the number of arguments is greater than three we want to return the message or rather exit with the message too many command line arguments and also we want to check the file extension for the files that the user is going to pass to this code making sure that these files are csv files in our previous exercises all we needed to check was the first argument reason why we were selecting argv at position one or at index one but this time around i want to check both arguments so i'm going to copy this and i'm going to paste it here just by the side of it here i'm going to put an n and i'm going to check that both files at position one and here at position two are csv files and for this not keyword to affect all of these checks i'm going to put all these in brackets so if any of these files is not a csv file i want to exit with the message not a csv file or rather let's make this a little bit smarter and let's say uh let's say file one or file two is not a csv file let me put a space here so file one or file two is not a csv file but if the user runs this with exactly three command line arguments what we want to start by doing is to read the first file that the user passed while running the code, which is what we are doing in this block of code. With open sys.argv at position 1, that's the first file, we are reading as a file. And instead of using csv.read here, I want to use csv.dict.read because I want to save this data as a list of dictionaries and not as a list of lists. But remember that dict reader does not return a dictionary, it returns a CSV reader. And so to convert this into a list of dictionaries, I'm using the keyword list here and I'm saving that in a variable I call menu. But let me change this name and this time around say students. So this should be good enough to open the file, read through it and save its content in a variable we call students. But if this file does not exist, we want to sys.exit again with the message file does not exist but if this does not happen and our trial block does not result in any error what we want to do next is to iterate over the list students get each name and separate it into two for first name and last name then save this new data in a new variable i'm going to call maybe new students and then use new students to write a new file we we'll call after.csv so the first thing I'm going to do is to remove all of these. But before I go ahead, I want to use a Jupyter notebook to explain a little bit what I'm going to do. I believe that will make this a lot clearer. So looking at this Jupyter notebook, the first thing I needed to do was to import sys and csv, like what we just did in scorgify.py. Next, I went ahead to open the file and read its contents and I saved it in the variable I said students. Now to give you an idea of what students look like, I went ahead to print each element found in the list students. And so this is what it looks like. So if you look at this, you realize that each element is a dictionary with key name and house. And each name has the name of a student, last name, first name, and the house has the house to which the student belongs to. And each element corresponds to a row in the file before.csv. 
So if I look at this file before.csv, you see that this rule has Abbott Hena in the house Hufflepuff. Next, we have Belle Katie in the house Gryffindor. Now, if I come back here, you see that here we have name Abbott Hena, house Hufflepuff. The next name Belle Katie, house Gryffindor, and so on and so forth. And so for us to be able to access these names and separate them into two, all we need to do is to iterate over the variable students, access the key name, and then use the split method, that's the string method split, to split this name into two, Abbott and Hena, passing this comma and space as a parameter to the method split. And this is what I'm talking about if I scroll down to this line. The first thing I did was to create a new variable. I just called it new students, which is a list, an empty list. Then using a for loop, I went ahead to iterate over each element of our variable students, saving these elements in a variable called row. And using row and the key name, I can access each name of each element. And using the split method, I'm able to separate these names into last name and first name. Then you use the append method to write to our variable new students. We are appending dictionaries with the keys first, last, and house and first corresponds to the student's first name, that's this variable here. Last corresponds to the student's last name, and house corresponds to the house in which the student is found. And to access that, all we need to write is row, square brackets, house. And to show you that this works, in this other code cell, I printed the elements of new students. And as you can see, the first element has as key first and the value Hena, key last, the value Abbott, and key house, the value Hufflepuff. And if you look at these, this corresponds to each row in our file before .csv. And after separating these names, all we need to do is to write them into a new file after .csv. So permit me to just copy this and I'll paste it here in our file Scorgy file to give us a head start. And let me arrange this. And so we have a second variable, new underscore students, which contains the student's first name, last name and house i'm going to create a new variable or call this variable field names this will contain a list with the elements first comma last and house i intend to use this for the header of my new file after.csv and we need to open this new file to write to it so with open however we're going to open it in write mode sys.rv at position 2 in write mode as file or create another variable or call it writer and I'm going to assign this to csv.dictwriter I'm going to pass as first parameter the file we're trying to write to and I'm also going to use the parameter field names and I'll assign it to our variable field names so this is going to use our variable field names as the header for this file and to write these new names, we need to call the CSV method write header. And this will look like writer dot write header parenthesis. And lastly, to write the rows, I'm going to use the method write rows. All we need to say is writer dot write rows with an S and pass as parameter new student. So I think this should work just fine. I'm going to save this. Or open up my terminal and we're going to test this code together let me run python of scorgify.py if i run this without any parameter as we expected too few command line arguments let me run this again and this time around let's say cat too few command line arguments if i run this again let's say cat and dog we have file one or file two is not a csv file let me run this again and say cat dog house too many command line arguments and so our error messages are working just well now if i run this this time around taking away all of these and let's pass something that's actually correct and let's say before.csv and we want to save this in the file we'll call it after.csv and if i run this no error message so that's promising now let me open this file after.csv and let's see what's in it great so we have our header first last and house 
and then we have the different roles Anna Abbott Hufflepuff, Katie Bell from Gryffindor, Susan Bones from Hufflepuff and so on and so forth. However, I have a little issue. Well, I wasn't expecting this to skip lines, meaning that we have to modify our code a little bit. But I'm pretty sure I know what I forgot to add in the files called the file dot file. So let me come back here and if I scroll down to just right here. So when we open to the file in write mode, what I needed to do here was to set the new line parameter to an empty string. So if I save this again and run this code one more time, python of scourgify.py, let's look at our file after.csv and this looks just perfect. Thank you guys for following up to the end of the video. I believe the code is clear enough. However, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll be pleased to answer you. If you enjoyed the video, do not forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons so as to support the channel. That said, have a good day.